All right, today what I'm going to talk about is called Hagen Poiseuille flow. We have a circular cross section, such as a pipe, okay, and we are analyzing the flow inside of a viscous flow in a pipe, okay. So I actually, to save time, I also went ahead and take a cross section AA prime to illustrate you that the cross section over here is circular. And if I look at the coordinate axis over here, this is going to be the R, like this is going to be the R direction, and I will have theta and I will have over here well, I'm gonna call this Z direction as well so let's take a look at the few facts that I need to analyze this the first is fully developed and what this will enable me to say is del P del Z will be equal to a constant value over here okay the second thing I want to note is I will only be applying this to a laminar flow which means that if I have a streamline it's gonna go like this obviously there's no yeah there we go then my vr will be zero okay and also v theta will be zero there will be no rotation it's not like spinning streamlines are just going in or out of over here okay so just like if you look at the story it's like just like this okay just in, in and out of the screen is the streamline vz is not equal to zero that's actually what i'm trying to find the other thing is that in the previous um Poiseuille float or quiet flow, what we did was we said that this is 2D. 2D, we don't really call 2D in a cylindrical polar coordinates. What we do is actually we say, for instance, my VZ is independent of theta. This is kind of similar to the 2D, it's not identical, but similar to that. And some people call this, which is rightfully, it's going to be axisymmetric. Okay? That means that. There's no variation in the theta direction. So if I have something in this plane, it will be the same as that plane, that plane, and that plane. Okay, it's reasonable depending on the application space. So now what I will do is I will go ahead and start like I did for the Poiseuille flow with the conservation of mass. And the conservation of mass will be like this, one over R del R V R del R plus one over R del V theta del theta plus del vz del z is equal to zero and let's look at the, what will happen to here look at it this vr is zero right so this vanishes um, up here right i'm looking here and here v theta is zero as well so that vanishes so the only thing i left with is del vz del z is equal to zero del vz del z is equal to zero I want to relate this to the parallel plates. When I did this conservation of mass, what I obtained was the velocity doesn't change in that direction. That was the x direction. And note that I get pretty much the same thing. Now I'm saying that the velocity doesn't change in the z because I replace z with x the way that I do cylindrical polar coordinates versus Cartesian coordinates. Okay? And what does this mean in terms of the acceleration in this direction? It's zero, right? It's a constant number. So this will come in handy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my Navier-Stokes equation in the, which direction should I write? Z direction. Why do I write it in the Z direction? Because it's in the flow direction. So let's go ahead and write this. Rho del Vz del Z del T, excuse me, plus Vr del Vz del R plus V theta by R del Vz del theta plus vz del vz del z let's take a look at the right hand side that will be equal to minus del p del z plus rho gz plus viscosity times 1 over r del del r of r del vz del r this term will be the troublemaker you'll see in a minute plus 1 over r square del square vz del theta square and the last term I was not able to fit in but it's going to be del square vz del z square and then close the bracket down here okay I did this in the previous uh, segment as well you see the acceleration this will be the acceleration in the z direction and that will be equal to zero why because right here del vz del z is equal to zero vz is not changing in the z direction so i'm going to simply take a shortcut and say this is zero you can do each of them okay and you will get the same answer del p del z well that's a pressure driven flow think about it just like the poison flow the pressure is making the flow in this direction so i'm not gonna mess with it 
How about row GZ? Let's take a look. Look here. Z is this way. G is that way. So they're not aligned. So I will get rid of that. Basically, GZ is equal to zero. This term is basically what I'm after, unfortunately. It looks like a bit of a troublemaker, right? Um, okay, so let's look at the next term, this term. So this term becomes zero. Why? Because of the third, number three, VZ is independent of theta, axisymmetric assumption. I need this, okay? Otherwise, I cannot really solve it. I need to have CFD to solve this. So then the last term becomes zero. Why? Because del VZ, del Z is zero. The one more derivative of that is also zero. The left hand side is zero. So this, this turned out to be not terrible then. I'm gonna simply move this to the other side of the equation because the, the this side is zero. And then I'm just gonna look at this. Okay, good. So let's do it. So viscosity times one over r del del r of r del v z del r will be equal to del p del z. So I'm writing from memory, so let's, let's double check. I hate to do this segment again. It's a long segment. Yep, looking like good. I'm good to go. Okay, I want to, you know, I want to take the integral, right? But this is a troublemaker, so I'm going to move them to this side of the equation. Obviously, this will come out here as r over viscosity over here. So let's do that. So I'm left with over here del del r of r del v z del r will be equal to r is denominator it becomes numerator viscosity is numerator it becomes denominator del p del z so now i'm going to take the integral of both sides but before doing that let's assess what is the vz a function of okay i hope it's only a function of r so i can do a regular derivative so let's take a look okay so is vz a function of theta nope is vz a function of z Nope. Okay, so I'm good then. This is going to be derivative. And this is very common in undergraduate class anyways. Then if I take the integral of both sides, I'm going to have r del v z del r. Notice when I take the integral of this, I just left with that one, right? So, okay. And the right hand side becomes, well, that's actually fairly straightforward to me, right? 1 over mu del p del z r square over 2 plus c1. Um, not that viscosity is constant and del p del z is constant because this is fully developed, okay? So that's why I was able to take the integral this way, okay? So then the next step is I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by r, right? Because I want to leave this alone so that I can take the integral of that. Okay, let's do it del v z del r will be equal to 1 over 2 nu del p del z um, when i divide this by r i'm gonna get r plus c1 by r and then take integral once more and this becomes v z as a function of r will be equal to r square over 2 right 1 over 4 nu del p del z r square plus do you remember this what is the integral of 1 over r it's going to be natural logarithm ln so it's going to be c1 and an r plus i'll get an interaction constant c2 so i seem to obtain my equation so the only thing that i need to do now is to find my boundary conditions so okay let's do this how many boundary conditions do i have do i need one, two, because I have two unknowns. So let's take a look up there. I will say that when R is equal to capital R, or capital D divided by two, which is the diameter or the radius of this pipe, the velocity will be zero. Okay, everybody will be able to agree with me. I, need to, I don't need to explain. So what is the second one? And no, I know what you're thinking. It's not when R is equal to negative R, V is equal to zero. It doesn't work that way. This, is, this, this R goes from zero to R. Okay, it doesn't go from minus r to r. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. I'm taking a shortcut for the second boundary condition. I'll explain why. Okay, let me write first one, then I'll explain the second one. So the first one will be vz at capital R, which is the radius of the pipe, will be zero. So 
But let me ask you a question. What would be to this equation when r is equal to 0? It's undefined and I don't want that. And I, at, I know that at r is equal to 0, I will get a velocity. So this is, for that reason, what I'm going to say is my c1 is equal to 0. Okay? There's another explanation for it. It needs a little bit more explanation, so I'm going to take a shortcut. Okay? But basically, when r is equal to 0, I don't want this to blow up this equation. I want to have a, actually you'll see, maximum, right? Think about the Poisson flow. You get the maximum at the center. It's same, similar over here. So for that reason, you know, I want this gone. I have one equation, one unknown then. Let's plug it in. 0 will be equal to capital R squared, right? That's what I insert as R divided by 4R del P del Z plus C2, right? So from here I get my C2 is equal to minus R squared over 4 nu del P del Z. Okay? That's nice. That's easy. So I'll, I'll go ahead and plug that in into my equation. Um, one thing is, I just want to highlight, um, this capital R is like H in the Poisson flow. So it's a constant value. This little r is a variable that's like x, y, z in the Poisson flow. Just want to emphasize that. So this is actually a constant, not a variable. So if I go back and plug into my equation, I will get myself vzr is equal to minus r squared over 4 nu del p del z 1 minus r over capital R squared. I just wrote this in a, a little bit more fancier way like this, but at the, at the end of the day, it's the same thing. So when, then I, if I plot this, what I will obtain is I will get, let's, let's redraw this, uh, our pipe, right? So it's like this, and this is the center line. Okay, so I will get myself. Uh, my intention was to have a maximum value over here, okay? So if I, if I plot this like that, and you will see that I get my maximum, so V center line will be equal to V max, okay? And I will actually, interesting thing, what will happen to here if I plug R is equal to zero? So this becomes zero, so then this becomes the V maximum, right? So that becomes minus R square over for nu del P del Z. So if I write this, now V Z R is equal to V max or V center line times 1 minus R over capital R square. Okay, and what actually you can get this uh, in uh, module 11 um, in the books. Sometimes they just represent this this way without going into this detail, but I think there's some value there because uh, when you're working in the field as an engineer, del P del Z will be generated by the pump. The viscosity is important and capital R is there, so you can obtain your V max. So there is some value in going to this extra distance, although the process was not as fun as I wanted to be. This segment has been longer than I expected. Actually, what I need to do is I need to obtain the Q, the volumetric flow rate, and the mean velocity. So I will actually have another segment on that. I'll be back.